Welcome to Spirit School. I'm your mentor, Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. In this podcast, I share honestly all I have learned about the mediumship and spiritual development journey. My intention is to normalize these conversations, to make way for a more confident, clear, and connected wave of lightworkers, serving the world of spirit with an open and joyful soul. Welcome again to Spirit School. Hello everyone and welcome to Spirit School. I hope you are having a great week. These are your spirit messages as the title of the podcast describes. This is your mid-month spirit messages as I was on holiday over the holiday break, the Christmas break, and I was completely offline, completely disengaged from working, and that was a really hard thing for me. That was something that was definitely a testament to my own personal and professional boundaries because, of course, Virgo heart wanting to be of service. I know the spirit messages are your absolutely favorite thing on this podcast. They definitely get the most downloads. I get messages whenever they are missing. And so here they are. Now, every single month in the Spirit School community, which is an off social media community, I do mid-month spirit messages. And so I will go live in the community and do the live channeling um, and just give people a little bit of a pep talk mid-month. So what you are going to hear is a recording of that mid-month spirit messages, just ever so slightly um, edited to exclude the banter at the beginning and the end. And so you get a big chunk of the spirit messages. Now, One thing I just have to say how this is going to be different is going to be the sound quality a little bit, of course. And then also you may hear me reference some of the comments that are in the community while I was there live. So just be mindful of those as you are listening. All the same, I hope that these spirit messages help uplift and inspire. And who knows, maybe it's exactly what you need to hear at this time. Okay, so, you know, mixed bag, kind of like how we're all feeling. But let me just start with like the channeled message. Um, The channeled message that was really coming in, and it, again, probably very um, in alignment with how so many of us are feeling. I'm ebbing and I'm flowing. um, Because what they were saying is things will never be like they were, but there is a returning happening. And I kept getting this word. I was like, is that even like a legit word returning? It's like a returning. And the way that they were making me feel around this is, you know, we always see posts when we get to a certain age where we're like, I miss the old days. Wasn't it simpler in the nineties? And wasn't it simpler in the eighties or the sixties or wherever it is that you kind of grew up with. And we kind of have this melancholy yearning for the way it was, even though when we were living in it, we were just like, is this it? (laughs) Like life is crazy right now. Um, But looking back, it does definitely seem much simpler. And the spirit world was, you know, really inspiring me through my heart in this returning to collectively just experience that we will be returning to some of the um, old practices that we may have had, um, the old ways of looking at things when we had much more innocent eyes, there will be a couple of things that will be returning back, but will never be the same. So it's almost like the spirit world was encouraging us to just take light inventory of what used to make us feel connected, what used to, you know, bring us the most joy, you know, even pre pandemic, they want us to go back to like pre pandemic, like, did you have a standing, you know, book club, in somebody's living room? Did you used to go to somebody's like home circle? Um, You know, did you used to spend time volunteering somewhere? They're making me feel like over the past like four years, this is for me too, but also for you guys, but like over the past four years, um, we have been at the mercy of whichever way society is kind of flowing um, to have that kind of like ease. And then now we're at a point where it's like, okay, what are we going to do collectively to, how do you want me to say this to kind of like establish how we are going to connect with one another and ourselves moving forward. I've been saying this for a few years where I feel like there's so much divine free will at play that the future is not yet set in stone. 
So I feel like there's a lot of us sitting in a little bit of discomfort and we're meant to be taking light inventory, not like, you know, yearning for the past or, you know, having some like regret about the past. It's not that it's lighter. It's like above even the fray of emotions, to be honest with you, it's just looking at this used to make me feel elated. This made me feel connected to my community. This made me feel connected to the spirit world. And it's like bringing some of these um, things back but then also realizing we can't go back and it's never going to be the same, but can we get excited about a newness coming in and taking and almost cherry picking some of those, um, those things that really, really brought us joy and really made us feel expansive. And then trusting that new things are going to come in. I feel that there's even like new spiritual practices, you know, even in the past couple months, um, spirit has been sharing with me that I, and again, you all might be like, Danielle, this already exists, but I don't know this. But the way that they're making me feel is that even spiritual teachings are going to continue to evolve this year and moving forward forward like I feel like the seven major chakras there's actually a lot more not just like the star one and you know it's like there's chakras actually between chakras so there almost feels like there's going to be like totally new teachings coming in and totally new ways of looking at the world of energy um there's a big switch that's happening and it's not like the old wasn't true it's just we're expanding on what has already been established if we look at like the wayne dyers and the louise hayes like the people who really did influence the spiritual space some time ago um all that is established and it's there and there's truth there but it feels like there's going to be an expansion um like i say i keep seeing and spirit keeps showing me i know for sure like i and i feel it that there's a chakra that's between the heart and the solar plexus because i feel it it's like where the seat of the soul is um and i don't know what is called or anything like that but this is kind of what i'm talking about yes we can take things from the old but the new we cannot avoid the new is going to come in in bigger ways um but we have to be open to it and we have to kind of let go of the past to be able to really be inspired in the future so i feel that but um, for those of you who are really interested in spiritual philosophy, spiritual teaching, understanding your own spirituality and humanity at a deeper level, there's going to be a lot of revelations. Um, there's going to be a lot of like revelations. And in saying that, there's a big message here around not being fearful of saying things that haven't been said before. before because there's a lot of like echo chambery, like that's like really what I noticed in the pandemic. Like you would hear one thing and it was like, blah, blah, like echo chamber. It's like millions of people saying it and it's like, well, and then like we confuse truth with lies and all that fun stuff. And spirit is saying um, that there's going to be more people saying new things, things that haven't been said, um, that have like an energetic imprint on them of uniqueness, of um, individualistic ideas that are inspired. And so like there's a whole sense of new teaching starting to come in in this wave. And that's how come, you know, the path is not set forward yet. Like the path is being set with every decision, every interaction, um, every session, every sitting, every meditation. Um, we are slowly laying a brick for the uncharted path forward because we are in such a pivotal time in our existence here on this planet of what the future will actually look like. And I feel like it has been like that for a little while, but it's like, okay, it's real now. <laughs> like we need to get our, our things together. And the way that they're showing it to me is truly just like one brick at a time. Each of us are laying one brick at a time and it all matters and it all counts. So in that way, the spirit world is also impressing upon us to stop um, seeing things with such grandiousness where it's like, can we see that every little thing can make such a big impact? Because they make me feel we are also exiting this time of like everyone having to be so special, um, so unique, um, you know, really separate ourselves. Like there's, um, you know, a season that we're kind of exiting where it's more individualistic, where it's like, I need to be special. Like I need to be seen at this like 
bigger level. And then now we're kind of like entering a season of being a collective, a collective together where it's like, we're coming together. We're laying these bricks together. You put down the cement, I'll lay the brick on top. And it feels so much more community focused. It feels so much more um, like we rise together. So I think we're going to see less gurus, less head figures, um, and the people who are doing it in a way to like be separate, be special, be above, um, may not make it to the, like the next iteration of what this spiritual community may look like. Um, I'm not open my eyes. I've not seen the chat. I am just bringing through the inspirations that are coming through. Um, so can we then see, this is a really important message that every brick is magnificent and every brick is in service of the spirit world. And every brick is like a divine expansion right? Um, so the way that we value ourselves and the way that we value how we serve the spirit world is also going to be shifting in um, deeper ways and more intimate ways. Um, there's a lot of intimacy, if I could bring in that word as well. It just feels like we're all going to be a lot more intimate with one another. Um, and I know Scorpio's heads are going with that, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, but it does feel that, um, it does feel that it's going to be a lot more cohesive in the future. So that's my vision I'm hoping for. If, you know, we follow the energetic tether and the energetic thread of what's been channeled through me, the laying of the brick, um, together, not individual, not separate. Um, it feels very, very, very harmonious. <sighs> I'm going to throw something really wild, um, we're doing 2024 bingo cards in the collective, and this might make a 10-year kind of like bingo card or a 100-year bingo card. Oh, okay, but they're almost making me feel that like if we kind of like embrace and embody like this mentality together, <laughs> like there's a chance like we won't even need like nine to five jobs. Like I don't know why that's important. I don't know why that's coming through, but it's almost like we have it all taken care of, like our needs are met. Like we didn't actually have to like hustle. We didn't actually have to um, give so much of ourselves away in our lives. Like there is a way to actually be in community with one another and all be supported. And it, yeah, those anyways, I feel like, I feel like this is so far in the future that I'm kind of like tuning into, but it's like, it matters now, like laying that kind of foundation. So um I'm just seeing the color red a lot. And when I feel into the color red, when I hear the color red, um, the only thing I'm hearing around it is make it sacred. I was feeling like there's a certain amount of people who will feel anger with this red and we need some people feeling angry and we need some people um, championing this at the front line. And then there's other people who are just as valuable in these big shifts who are instead turning inwards and like making it sacred. But the color red is very significant with um, some of these messages that are coming in. So um, your spiritual practice that spirit is inviting you to as part of these messages is how can I feel more intimacy to my community? How can I feel more intimacy into the spirit world and to um, society and to humanity and to this planet? And there's a spiritual practice here and an invitation for you to decide for yourself what role you want to play in whatever happens for us in the future. And so this is an invitation. This is not a, I need to figure out what my purpose is. Wasn't that the way for so long? Tell me my purpose. I want you to hire me so that you can tell me what your purpose is. And Spirit's like, what do you want? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? How do you want to serve? How do you want to be seen? How do you want to feel about yourself um, when you return home? And so these questions that we ask ourselves, our higher selves, but our soul selves as well, um, not just the spirit self, but the soul self are going to be really indicative of your next steps and the intention that you're putting towards laying those bricks. Um, so a lot of deep inquiry here, a lot of um, invitations from the spirit world. And um, yeah, huge time of divine free will, divine free will, divine free will, huge, huge time of that. So uh, okay. My eyes are open. There's like 60 of you here now. Hello. The screen keeps flashing for me. We'll see what happens. One second. Let me just kind of like ground back down. When I open my eyes, sometimes I feel like, whoop, 
Okay, we went up somewhere. So how do you feel about these channeled messages? Give me an emotion, give me a feeling. I don't know how far to go up here in the chat and then I'll tell you what kind of cards we got. I think the cards are gonna feel a little bit empty compared to um, the channeling. What came through? Surrender your, you resonate, okay. Um, you feel this making the old new again. I like that, Sarah. I like that. Some of you are poetesses. So like some of you have a way of like bringing words together so strong. Um, I feel hopeful. Yeah, it's, you know, long gone are the days where we kind of sit back and just like wait to see how things kind of like fly. You know, I think um, we don't have that luxury right now. But there's an empowerment that I feel with that. I feel it's empowering. Like, there's an empowerment to it. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm trying to bring in astrology. I always appreciate that because I am not an astrologer. So I always appreciate that. It feels alignment with Pluto shift and Aquarius, new ways of thinking and community focus. Oh, very good. I love that. Feel certainty in the uncertainty. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look at what we just went through together. Look at what we just survived <laughs> the past four years. We've, we've done well, um, considering could be my postpartum, but emotional feeling the truth in this so much love. I feel this. Okay. Um, mm. oh, I love that. I felt words of Caroline miss perspective in the shift of collective and collaboration for our earth feels aligned with the message I've been reading, um, for a strength year too. Okay. So those of you, what mastermind was it? It was Sarah Delonte's mastermind. So the expanded mastermind, I mean, the strength card came up twice yesterday for us, um, two different people pulled that strength card. So it's very synchronistic. Rachel, you're also bringing in that word here today. Um, eight, lion, Leo, strength, um, all, all very, very, very powerful. Okay, my crown's like tingling with that. Okay, so here's the cards I pulled. They may or may not fit with the channeled messages that came through, but of course, shadow comes up. Um, you know, we still are in the absolute depths of winter, so we still will have to look at those um, aspects of ourselves. And, you know, maybe there's like a little bit of me in this as well, but like what I'm feeling and what I'm hearing around this is like, you want to be of service, you want to be part of this big change, but there's still an aspect of your human that says, who am I? There's still this aspect of your human who says, I'm not worthy of this path or this mission. She began again, spirit saying, we have to, we always look at things so grandiose. It doesn't have to be that. Like every interaction, do you ever like, you know, pay for the person behind you at the Timmy's line or, you know, in the States, I don't know, Jack in the box. I don't know <laughs> what you guys eat down there, like regularly, but like in Canada, it's like Timmy's, um, you know, like, do you know how good those little things feel like, you know, buying somebody like a $3 coffee behind you who gets coffee for three bucks, $6 coffee behind you. And like the impact and ripple effect that that kind of makes is small. It's intimate. It's, it's not seen by anyone else, but the impact that it makes is like bricks being laid. So it's time to kind of um, break up that shadow part of us that says that we have to um, be seen by the world. We our, our gifts, our generosity, our light work has to be seen by thousands for it to make an impact or a difference. And that's not true. That's really what Spirit's kind of saying here. And um, and to really look at that aspect of yourself that is the naysayer when it comes to what we're talking about here and um heal that shit right heal that shit um what do you want me to say around this one okay so this is kind of recalling a message that was coming through funny enough i kept i, I was bringing through that vision of uh, a society within humanity where um, you know, we don't have to work if we don't want, like, like, I know I have no retirement plan. Like I'm saving for retirement still. I'm not that stupid, but <laughs> I, I don't have like a date doing my work I'm doing. I don't see retirement in my future. Um, I hope to be doing this work, honestly, at my kitchen table when I'm old and gray until the day I die. Like that is literally how I see this body of work for myself and like how much I love this work. And what spirit is saying, like there's actually like an opportunity to, uh, 
this is going to sound so wild, but it's almost like let go of a calendar, like work in seasons again. Um, yeah, you know, like even today, I'm supposed to like I have sessions available in spring. I open things in spring because that's how I've been starting to really look at things. It's like, yeah, in spring, I love doing sessions and, and mentorship. So I'm going to open up sessions in spring. And I've been looking at that more in seasons. And maybe that is a calling for those of us who have um, the free range to experiment with this and kind of like prove like you can actually work like this and, you know, stay well and still, you know, be able to thrive with your family and, and do all that stuff. But there is this message around this of almost like this, like returning and working in seasons. And that was something that's been coming through for two years from spirit. Um, so then if you are a planner, because I know a lot of people do, you know, because of work and because of school and because of how society structure, we are looking at the planning of the year ahead. Spirit's kind of encouraging, like, what would it look like? if you chose to work in seasons, just a bit of a calling because it's a bit of an old message as well. Um, what do you want me to say around this? Look, it's just, um, so what I feel around this, like when I look at a card, by the way, because I'm a teacher at heart, I have to look at this. Um, I look at, I just see what stands out for me first. And the first thing that stood out for me on this card in particular today for you all was the four card, which is a foundations card. So it's almost like, so spirit is saying so many people are waiting for a foundation to be formed before they take their next step. But what they're saying is your foundation is actually going to be continuously built and unfolding. And your foundation, much like a brick road, is going to continue to be laid through the journey. So if there's somebody who is listening to this, this feels very specific, who is like waiting for some sort of foundation to be built before they do the fucking thing, spirit is saying, mm, um, you don't have to wait. Um, like your foundation is going to be continuously evolving and moving and shaking and shifting and um, and not to wait. And there's like some sort of like inner authority because the authority word is what drew to me next. Oh, often this card is an angel card for me because the halo. And so it's, it's giving me a little bit of a different vibe. But what spirit is saying is that there's an opportunity through these messages to really get clear on inner authority the inner world strength, right? Um, you know, it's great to have influence out in the world, but that's, that's shaky ground, right? Like relying on other people to see you as an authority when you don't feel like an authority yourself is building on very shaky ground. And what, so what spirit is saying here is like, you know, especially this like shadow card, it's like, we're really wanting to make sure that we're not waiting for everything to shift or appear right, or, to have like some foundation, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'll, I'll launch offerings when I have like a thousand followers or like that kind of thing. It's like, no, let's get the inner authority first and then trust that um, the outer authority will actually feel more significant and impactful for us and will bring us more joy and purpose and a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose um, when we really work on that inner, inner authority. So don't delay, just trust like, um, Gosh, you know what they're showing me? Now, I used to watch this TV show, um, Gold Rush. I don't know why I love that show. Me and my husband used to watch it. And there was like this machine that like was like really big and it would like dig the ground and it would like, I don't know. It, it's almost like I, I, I'm just seeing like this big machine that's kind of like, like digging the ground, but then like, like laying things like behind you at the same time. So like, it doesn't have to be one or the other, like you can actually do both coinciding. So stop limiting ourselves a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, oh yeah, very much a strength theme. Okay, so where do you want me to go with these two? Um, so now I'm pulled out two different decks with these. And I'm just trying to like pull something that's like not super obvious too. I'm trying to go like a little bit deeper with these. I'm not getting a lot of depth from the sense of this card. It feels very simple and maybe that's a blessing and beauty in itself, but it's simply like, what are you ready to let go of? You know, I feel very much like, and I have a lot of things to let go of too. Like I've had a lot of wounds come up in the past, like two months, um, like a lot of like different things come up in my personal life and stuff like that. And, and um, you know, they're just showing me the reference around this because it's like, are we holding on to things that give us a false sense of security and safety? Are we holding on to things that um, others 
put this value on us that it's so valuable we can't let it go you know what i mean so i feel like um there's like this clinging and this is where spirit really wants to bring us back to an earlier message where we kind of go above the fray of emotion and just say what do i want to bring from my past what belongs in the future i'm willing to create here not just for me but for the collective and then can you with ceremony with ritual with sacredness let go of what maybe is distracting you because you're like clinging too hard for it um so you all are spiritual people you have your own practices your own ways of like letting things go um but i don't know i feel like there's a challenge with this card that some of you're gonna have to let go of something pretty big um and that keeps coming up for me as well things i'm not willing to let go of and clinging on to the past and doing things in old ways like all that continues to like kind of come up and so can you trust what is waiting for you when you let something else go now all this being said um the boundaries card who here drop me an emoji feels like you need some help with boundaries um but what spirit is kind of saying here is that like there's a lot of things that came through today that are very action orientated or is it oriented i don't know um <laughs> hard time with some of that stuff orientated oriented um but they want you to know it doesn't have to get done this year you know what i mean we have kind of like this false timeline that's always placed upon us like i need to get done this season and they did get done in this astrology cycle i mean that's what a cycle is it returns it comes back it's almost like the bigger message in all of this is that grandiousness, that all or nothing, that extremism. I think that's dying away. I think it's dying away. And I'm actually drawn to this crystal that I got in um, my advent calendar, which is, a, a, let me see. I was like, if the card is like right there, it's going to be really synchronistic. But this is like a gentle and slow transformation crystal. And so I'm really drawn to this when it comes to boundaries again i feel like some of you are like it's this or nothing and it can be more gentle um so just know that that's a big message when it comes to like these transformations that are taking place it can be slow and gentle and still be wildly impactful to you and the collective um so let's like make that sexy and that's not my vibe, by the way. Like, I'm fast and furious. My energy is fast and furious. So some of these feel very counterintuitive to me. Um, but yeah, it feels a little bit gentle. So, you know, there can be strength in softness, can't there? You know, so one of my favorite people I've ever met was my end of life doula teacher and mentor. Um, she was one of the most powerful people I've ever met. And she talked really slow, really soft. If you asked her a question, it would take her, she would sit there and think about it for like 45 seconds. And you're, you get to a point where like, do I need to repeat my question? Um, Cause that's how I'm like, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And she was one of the most powerful people I've ever met. It's just like this quiet power and like this soft power. And she really stands out to me and we keep in touch with each other along the way. And so I think of her when I think about like this strength, this like subtle strength um, and how powerful it is. And I, I wish I had that. I wish I had a little bit more of that. I'm like, yeah, I could probably use a little bit of a pause to kind of like reflect or integrate or allow sink in like what is kind of happening in front of me and she was so beautiful at that um so she's kind of my archetype i think around that kind of like subtle quiet power and i love it this is the end of our spirit messages bye friends have a good day thanks for lifting my spirits i was not feeling too great before this so my spirits are lifted and a lot of that's thanks to you all right see you guys mm -hmm.